morning you are watching sunrise at sea and you are right in time for wellness this morning i am sandra cope with you this morning and today i am back at kampala hospital kololo yes i am back to see the good doctor dr martin adupet who is an obstetrician and gynecologist and today what we'll be discussing is the second trimester why is it important to go for that five month fetal scan at in your second tri trimester and <coughs> all the other things that you should do in your second trimester as you prepare to go into the third trimester. Good morning, Doctor. How morning. are you? Morning. I'm okay, Sandra. Morning. It's good to see you good again. To see you too. How have you been? I've been very well, thank you. Well, today yeah. we are discussing the second trimester. Okay. As you know, um, the five month. Mm -hmm fetal scan mm -hmm. that is mandatory for all moms to go for mm -hmm. like most moms actually do not know this mm -hmm. most people do not know this but there is the five month fetal scan mm -hmm. that every every expectant mother should go for and all the other nitty, nitty gritties that come in with the second trimester because by then you're used yeah. but yeah. now things have changed you're not in the first trimester yeah, okay. yeah so could you please shed some light on that okay thank yeah. you thank you uh, Sandra for hosting me again so like um, so the second trimester is the period between 14 weeks and 28 weeks. Okay. So this is the period of gestation that I think most women begin to enjoy their pregnancy. You know, most women begin, by this time they are used. They are not nauseous they anymore. They are no longer nauseous anymore. Yeah. They are not vomiting as much or most times they have even stopped vomiting. Yeah. Uh, their appetite is back. Oh, with a vengeance. With a vengeance. <laughs> so you find the person who saw me in the first trimester uh, that she doesn't have appetite in the second trimester. Her complaint is that she has a lot of appetite. And all those cravings. And all those cravings come in. into play, you know. Yeah. So most times I feel the second trimester is, especially for those who wanted to get pregnant, mm. that's the period at which they begin to enjoy their pregnancy those complications that they were having most of them have stopped yeah okay so by the time they come to see the doctor their complaints are not as many yeah. you know actually their complaints is i have put on too much weight doctor i feel i've, I've gained a lot you know <laughs> i've gained five kilos because they're eating very well <laughs> they're not stressed they're not yeah. vomiting so definitely the weight has to come up and uh, during this visit one of the things that we have to do or we recommend to do is an ultrasound scan yes this is between 18 and 24 weeks yeah. what you call five months so around five months there yeah. why do we why do we ask for an ultrasound scan really two reasons mm -hmm. i'll start with the most important reason and uh, this is because we need to find out if there are any congenital abnormalities on the baby okay. yes congenital abnormalities are what there are any issues uh, on the brain on the spinal cord on the heart remember the first trimester yes is development yes the things are developing yes. from then on until the lady gives birth maturation whatever was formed is now maturing. maturing yes so between five months or between 18 and 24 weeks we want to see are there the issues progress of the, the progress the, yeah, that heart which was formed does it have a hole okay. you know the brain the spinal cord are all the limbs okay the kidneys is everything fine the blood and pressure they say you can check the blood pressure also of the fetus of the fetus yes uh, is that possible so not really not yet uh, okay. Not, okay it's not something we routinely do you know okay. the mother yes the, the baby no yeah so the ultrasound scan basically guides us are the abnormalities if they are there are they compatible with life or not so you have to make a decision we then. have to make if, a decision. If somebody if, if there is a defect and you're like you know what this will not pan out so we advise for you to terminate exactly for example if there are congenital abnormalities a small hole in the heart that is fixable that's a fixable thing i advise you i talk to you uh, you and um, and your husband or father of the baby and i say yeah. this is a small hole in the heart yeah please be aware you know prepare you psychologically mentally it can be fixed Okay. If I do a scan at that time and I see the baby has no scalp, yeah. you know, the brain is being exposed. Yeah. So that is uh, an abnormality which is not compatible with life. And that's when I talk to you and I tell you, you know, Sandra, the issue is like this. Unfortunately, when this baby comes out, it will not last more than a day. Okay. So my advice to you is what you do, what you call medical abortion or termination of a pregnancy, which is not viable. So that's why it's very important. That's yes. the number one reason. Okay. The second is more for the couple. 
to determine the sex. That's the best time to know the sex. And you know, usually, <laughs> that's the so reason. So you can have those uh, reveal parties. Uh, reveal, gender gender reveal. reveal parties, which are now like the rage, you know. Yeah. So most, most times, couples come here with a third person. Oh, yeah, so that's the person who... Yes, reveals. I didn't know. It's something which is so cool it. nowadays, you know. <laughs> so they come with a third person. Yes. They go and do the ultrasound scan. So it's usually the sonographer who, who sees, and then yeah. they're like, you know what? We are the mommy and daddy. Please tell so and so the sex because we want to know the gender reveal party. Yes. So that's the secondary reason why we do an ultrasound scan at that time. Okay. Yeah. Um, so also during this period, um, there are certain things, certain medications yeah. we give you as a mother that uh, are very critical. Prophylaxis, tetanus injection. Oh yes. Uh, you, know, you remember those? Yeah. yeah. Fancy that to prevent you from getting malaria. Uh, malaria, deworming medication. So these are they seem routine, but they are very yeah. vital in maintaining the pregnancy and keeping it at a certain level. It's also important to take your blood pressure as a mother, yeah, because this is time. when this is now when we start getting issues of what we call preeclampsia, yeah, pregnancy induced hypertension yeah. begins from five months and above. Okay. So that's when we start critically assessing. Um, I, I would just like for you to explain why it mm -hmm. is so important not to get malaria and how it affects mm. the, the unborn child. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Um, malaria, just like any infection, is a no-no for a pregnant woman. You know, um, That's why in the first trimester, especially since we live in a malaria endemic area, this is yes. sub-Saharan Africa, malaria is part of us, it's going to be with us, it's not going away. So that's why from as early as the first trimester, in the health talk I talked to you about, I, yeah. I advise you about sleeping under a mosquito net, you know, uh, getting rid of any stagnant water, water or around bushes or bushes around, around. you know, yeah. preventive medicine. You yes. know what? You can easily get malaria. When you get malaria, you can get an early miscarriage. Yeah, sorry, you can get a miscarriage. You can get what you call premature labor. Okay. And how easy it is to lose the baby. And then uh, what other measures should uh, women in that trimester take in, um, in lines of diet and exercise? Uh -huh. Because like myself, mm -hmm. I have naturally low blood pressure. Yes, yes, yes. So I, I was advised, because people tell you, take this smoothie, do this. Mm -hmm. But I was actually mm -hmm. advised to stay away from beetroot and hibiscus mm -hmm. because they further lower the blood pressure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what should women look out for? Okay. So unless a particular complication comes up, like I say, a case-by-case -case basis. For example, yes. you had low blood pressure, you are told to avoid certain things. Yes. If you come to see me in the second trimester, you're like, Dr. I'm okay, just that I have heartburn, it's over disturbing me. I'm like, okay, for now, keep away from pineapple or any acidic food or anything mm. which will worsen it. Yeah. You tell me, oh, doctor, okay, I'm fine, but I'm having bleeding episodes. I'm like, okay, for now, don't exercise, do not drive, do not do any hectic activity, just keep it there. Relax. So second trimester, it's more like uh, a trimester which is um, continuing with what you have been doing previously. It it's has like been working time. for you half time. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. Like half time. Exactly, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Continue what has been working for you. Do not change whatever diet you have been going, uh, having. Continue having it and uh, don't change your routine. Just continue like that in the second okay. trimester. Yeah. Okay, doctor. So I, I'd like to ask you. Women are always and and they are their husbands and their baby daddies, they, mm. they are all so excited to feel that first kick. Yeah. It's like an event, mm. yeah? Yes. When when, sh when should someone expect those first okay, kicks yeah, of the yeah, baby? So. That's a very, that's a very, very, very exciting moment for a couple, you know, when they anticipate the first kick, when the first kick comes. Yes. So usually for a first time mother, mm -hmm. uh, the first kick can start as early as 18 weeks. So that's like most how many time, months? That's about coming to five months, four and a half coming to five months. Yes, okay. Uh, from as early as 18 to by 24, most of, most people should be feeling the fetal movement, so the kicks as you call it. But for those who are second child and onwards, other pregnancies, they can feel it as early as 16 weeks. Wow. Yes, yes, yes. So the first time mother, it's a bit more at 18 weeks. Mm -hmm. um, the second, the second, the second, the third, the fourth pregnancy, usually from as early as... 16 weeks. Oh, so the more kids you have had, the earlier you can exactly, feel the Exactly, you kicks. can feel the kicks. So, 
that's usually how it is. And then when you usually start feeling these kicks and everything, you know, mm. everybody is, is like a cook in the kitchen. Yes. They want to give you advice yes. even which you didn't ask for. They're like, yes. oh, now yeah. you should drink this, take yeah. these leaves, boil yeah. them, yeah. drink. Mm. They're going to, to help, make, you. Yeah, help you. Yeah. So everyone has like a recipe, a yes. concoction. A and then many people, like many women, like you said, yes. every person is different. Is different. So yes. you can end up taking something that's not good for you. Exactly. Because yes. like you said, in, in the first trimester, like you advise us. Mm. It's not a copy paste situation. Yes, yes, yes. So, what would you advise those women who are like they're told take this herb, take that, take this? Because they're already like you said, I you should know. all, you should already be going for antenatal. Mm. So that should cover cover you, yeah. Yes, but yes. they want to go an extra. I guess I guess yeah. they're excited. They're excited, also, excited or anxious. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What so I think that's a very good question. I I, I really appreciate you have brought it up. And one thing we need to realize is that in Africa here. Yeah, we're very traditional sort of people, yes, yeah. very cultural, you know. Yeah. And many pregnant ladies are getting advice, like you say, from aunties, yeah. from sisters who have <laughs> given birth, from mothers, yeah. you know, from well-meaning people. Yes, and some of the, well. yeah, they mean well, they genuinely mean well. Mm. And some of this advice, like you say, is this herbal, these herbs that they advise to take. Yeah. And many advise to take it if they want to have a very smooth delivery, very smooth, quick labor. Yeah. There, there is a misconception that these herbs, whether you drink them or you bathe in them, yeah. they will soften the bones. <laughs> they will soften the bones and when they soften, the baby will just will drop, out. drop out. In 30 minutes, <laughs> you reach hospital like this, pa, 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 baby just drops out, <laughs> which is the farthest thing from the truth. And uh, more often than not, um, health workers discourage women from taking those herbal things. Mm -hmm. And the reason we discourage them is because we do not know how much they are taking. You see, okay. when I tell you, uh, Sandra, take this medicine, I, I know the dose I'm giving you, I know how much you're taking, yeah. how long you're taking. You can regulate it. You can regulate it. But with these herbal things, they give you a jerry can and tell you to take Drink. two glasses. Every three hours. Every three hours. <laughs> you know? I know? They mean well, but yeah. you do not know the complications that are going to arise mm. by you taking that which is not regulated. You know, you don't know how much the dosage you're taking, which can end up bringing you problems in your pregnancy. Well, you heard that from the good doctor. Please stay away from those herbs and speak to your gynecologist and obstetrician mm. before you end up you know, harming yourself mm. and your unborn child. child yes, yeah, yes. I totally agree. Yes, yes. And furthermore, just, just to bring, you know, there are so many, and that's why I advise women to go to a qualified health worker because there are so many things you hear. Uh, I just want to bring this funny story of some lady who asked me, is it okay for her to drink Uganda Waraji? For what? Because when she has heard that when she drinks Uganda Waraji, the baby will come out looking clean and very nice. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> so you see, she must have oh. got that advice. Exactly. Mm. She must have got that advice, Sandra, from an auntie or someone who meant well, whose yeah. baby came out clean. And she thought it was... And she thought it was UG. And she should have been drinking. And she should not in have been drinking in the first pregnant. place. First of all, how much UG should you drink for the baby to come out clean? That's, yeah, that's exactly. thought right there. thought there, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that's why I advise ladies. Oh, you're going to hear many stories. But always ask your gynecologist, I hear this, is this right, is this true, should I do this, should I not do this? We're the ones who can give you advice which will help you. Yes. They mean well, relatives and friends, but what worked for them might not necessarily work for you. True, true. Yeah, what they're telling you might not be in the best interest for you and the baby. Thank you, Doctor. You're Thank you, welcome. Doctor, for You're that. You're very welcome. Well, you had that from the good doctor, Dr. Martin Adupet, who's an obstetrician and gynecologist here at the Kampala Hospital in Kololo and now you know what to do and what not to do in your second trimester and please if you are in your second trimester head down to a health worker or your gynecologist obstetrician and have that five month fetal scan mm -hmm. it is very very important mm -hmm. well stay at sea we are still with you good morning mm -hmm.